and bacteria of all types and sizes. Today we are actually looking at the brand new Royal Armour Update 1.55 for War Thunder and today we're actually looking at a tank that wasn't mentioned in any of the videos. We're actually going to be talking about the captured Churchill Mark III. Of course this is a premium vehicle that you can find in the German tech tree just under the Panzerwerfer 42. This is the Infantari Panzer Kamp, uh, uh, Panzer Churchill. It is a rank 2 battle rating 3.7. Uh, I believe on par to its British counterpart. Let's take a quick look. Churchill, yep, it's exactly identical to its uh, British counterpart. Now, what makes this tank very unique? Well, let's take a look at some modifications real quick and you'll get to see what I'm talking about. This one actually gets the shot mark 9. Very similar, it even gets the shot mark 5 and the shot mark 8. Now, this tank is actually pretty goddamn fun to drive. I haven't taken it out into any battles uh, per se, with the exception of one that I did with a live stream with DDG. Again, thank you David for the wonderful uh, 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 eagle donation, you're awesome my friend. And so I'm going to talk a little bit more about the tank here. Well, I'm going to let the uh, uh, cameras just pose around and whatnot. Uh, the infantry tank Mark IV A22 was a British heavy infantry tank used by, in the Second World War. Uh, basically, that was its factory name was the A22. It is now otherwise known as the Churchill from Mark I, I believe all the way up to Mark Seven or Eight, if I remember correctly. Uh, let's take a look. The uh, initial design for the tank, uh, the whole composite was made of flat plate because, again, the majority uh, of the tank's design was from World War One, where they assumed it was going to be a trench warfare. Now, the first initial, uh, the first initial Churchill had a three-inch howitzer in the hull and a two, uh, a quick-firing two-pounder gun in the main turret. Uh, 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 but after the drastic uh, uh, losses they took uh, due to mechanical failures of the howitzer and the turret ring they decided to redesign the tank and so the Mark II's and Mark III's came along. Now the Mark II it is basically the it, it, it's an interim tank between the Mark I and the Mark III so we're actually going to talk more about the Mark III. The Mark III was specifically sent uh, uh, to Africa using the six pounder gun. It saw action at the Second Battle of El Amain in October 1942. A detachment called King's Force, supported with the attack of the 7th Mortar Brigade. The Churchills were fired on many times by German anti tank guns, but only received more than light damage. One tank was said to have been hit up to 80 times. The actual records dictate that the tank was actually hit 83 times. However, uh, after battle action report teams realized that the, the tank had only actually hit, was hit only about 40 to 43 times. Um, King's Force was disbanded after El Alamein had been informed that the testers were uh, uh, whether the Churchills could operate in Africa. Instead, the full tank brigade, the 25th Army Tank Brigade of all three regiments, was sent to Africa and went into action in February 1943 for the Tunisian campaign. Uh, the Churchills took part in a, con in a containing and German offensive in Operation Oscar Puff. Um, and now probably murdered that, I do apologize, in February, February to March of 1943. At a place called uh, Stremgrola, uh, farm two Churchill Mark III tanks of the 51st Royal Tank Regiment got ahead of their squadron and came across an entire German transport column, which they ambushed and completely shot up before they even rejoined. The end of the result was a destruction of two 88mm anti-tank guns, two 75mm anti-tank guns, and two 50mm anti-tank guns anti-tank guns, four lesser anti-tank guns, 25 wheeled vehicles, three, uh, two three-inch mortars, two Panzer Mark III tanks, and an infantry of nearly, the, and, the, and an infliction of nearly 200 plus casualties to that German battalion. The Churchill tank is a hull-down defensive position made by particular contribution of the Allied success. 
of one count on the 21st of April 1943 during the start of the Battle of Longship Hill, a Churchill tank at the 48th Royal Tank Regiment got into a got into a bit into the got the better of a got the better. I have to read down. Got the better of a German Tiger One heavy tank. A six-pounder shot from the Churchill lodged between the ti ti Tiger's turret and turret ring, jamming the turret and injuring the Tiger crew. The crew abandoned the Tiger, which was subsequently captured by the British, otherwise known as Tiger One Three One. The Tiger in the first place captured by the Western Allies was the first Tiger captured by the Western Allies. At this point in the war, Soviet Russia had actually captured several different uh, Tiger Ones and uh, automatically either A, dismantled them, uh, or, or B, uh, uh, just outright scuttled them. Um, due to the fact that the, even the tank, even though it was captured, uh, would, would cause fear and panic amongst the ranks of the, the Russian troops. And it was hard, getting harder and harder for the commissars. Uh, to actually keep the, the men in line. Uh, was first captured by the Western Allies and particularly useful uh, for intelligence. Tiger 131 has since been restored to fully working condition and now can be displayed at the Boddington Tank Museum in the United Kingdom. However, um, that's not the only uh, 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 Tiger in the world that you can actually uh, uh, see. Several private collectors also own Tigers in various states. Uh, there's actually one tiger in California that is on the verge of being completed and uh, will be in actually better condition than Tiger 131, seeing as how the fact that it will still actually have every fully workable equipment, that means radio, machine guns, main cannon, you name it, uh, even with rounds as well, by the way. Uh, the, the rounds used by Tiger 131 are half powder loads due to the fact that they're, they're afraid they'll damage the breach. Um, they, the tank saw a lot uh, uh, of uh, use in Italy, Western Europe, and other theatres, including uh, New Guinea with the Australian Army, uh, along with a whole bunch of M4 Shermans. Uh, unfortunately, the Australian Army didn't act exactly like the Sherman. Believe it or not, they preferred the Matilda over the Sherman. Go figure, they're Australian. And so they, the, the, Sherman, the, the Sherman Mark III after it had been extensively modified into the Sherman Cro into the into the Churchill Crocodile, sorry, uh, um, was even used in the Korean War, of all things. Um, several uh, 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 a total of three hundred and three Churchill Mark Threes and Mark IV more four types were part of a land lease program. Forty three were lost en route to the uh, due to Arctic convoys. Churchills were at the Battle of Provonovka uh, or Kursk. In 1943, the Fifth Guards tank, ar tank Army of the Soviet Union. The Irish Army Service even actually uh, 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 purchased three Churchill Mark, uh, Mark 6s in 1948 and uh, eventually tried to uh, upgrade the uh, tanks using the Rolls-Royce Merlin engine, uh, but it was a monumental failure because it, have, it was having issues with the uh, drive gear and transmission systems. Uh, other variants, of course, is the AVRE 290mm Pitard Mortar variant of uh, 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 Churchill. I highly doubt that you'll get to see that here in War Thunder. Um, but the uh, initial development branch of the Churchill went Mark 1, Mark 2, the OKE, the Mark 2 CS, the Mark 3 to Mark 4. Then it went to the 75mm, the AVRE, the Mark 6, and the Mark 5 then the Mark 9 LT, then the Mark 9, then the Mark 10, then the ARK, then the Mark 7, then the Crocodile, and the Mark Mark 8, and then the AVRE Mark 2, if memory serves. So, again guys, uh, in the Mark 3, there was uh, 675 Mark 3s built. Uh, the first major armament overhaul in the series, eliminating the, uh, the whole howitzer, as I was telling you, uh, and equipped the tank with a more powerful six-pounder gun, 84 rounds. Unlike uh, unlike early versions, it had a welded turret. The first Mark was to have catwalks over the upper track runs, which was designed to let uh, troops uh, hitch a ride. Um, the average actual speed of the Churchill, speaking of, of rides, is a whopping dun, 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 15 miles per hour or 24 kilometers per hour using a uh, triple differential steering in gearbox, which means that translates to the tank having a hard time uh, trying to do zero point turns. In fact, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to a test drive and we're gonna do our, now I'm gonna leave it in uh, realistic for you guys, but some of you guys will probably do it in arcade, so I'll, I'll switch to arcade real quick. Point edit break here.
And we are back, guys. As you can see, this is the Churchill Mark III. We're doing an actual full-on turret rotation test. So what we're going to do is we're going to rotate the turret 360 degrees and count down to how fast it takes. Are you ready, guys? Uh, go. 1,000, 1, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000, 7, 1,000, 8, 1,000, 9. Exactly nine seconds for a full 360 degree turret rotation. Now bear in mind this crew in this in this Churchill is uh, uh, not exactly uh, uh, the best because uh, all crews in a test are set at default. Now, as you can see, it's got a mixture of ammunition loadouts. With it being a premium tank, all the ammo is automatically researched. Now what we're going to do is I'm actually going to see how, how long it takes for this tank to get to its actual speed. So we're going to let the engine start. Let the RPM settle, and we're going to go, go! 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000, 7, 1,000, 8, 1,000, 9, 1,000, 10, 1,000. So it looks like on the this level of terrain, the gearbox is locked at the fourth gear, which is 12 miles per hour. That's the shoot on the move. It's pretty goddamn accurate shooting on the move. Again, let's see. Oh wow! This is that gunfire. Double fire. You've got. Turret does get a little bouncy at times. Wow! Nice, nice, nice. Clearly, we've met the the ranging distance. Now, we're going to do a, a quick chassis rotation here, test guys, are you ready? 1, 2, 3, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000, 7, 1,000, 8, 1,000, 9, 1,000. So, same turret rotation speed as the, uh, 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 well, chassis rotation is the same as turret. Beautiful hit there, now that it's fuel tank. Shell deviation is probably 0.4, maybe 0.5. Yeah, it's, it's more, it's in the upper closest to 0.5. Transmissions now, this should be the engine. Track set in that time. There we go. Let's see the velocity change. There really isn't that much of a velocity change between the stock ammo and the first upgrade ammo. Nice. Again, this... Again, the, the shell deviation is probably 0.4, possibly 0.5. What that means is you've got a 0 0.4, 0 0.5 uh, uh, shell deviation multiplier. Uh, in World of Tanks, that would be uh, shell uh, inaccuracy. Uh, you know how in uh, World of Tanks, the KV, uh, with KV-2 is 5.0? Okay, frag rounds apparently seem to just go right on through, see? Boom. Right through Soviet armor. Double fire. I didn't think it was possible to get to a double fire, but apparently it is. Okay, so we know it can punch up above its weight because uh, the KV-1 is a 5.0, and uh, of course this is a 3.7. So we're going to head back to the hangar now, and uh, I'm going to have a quick overview of the upgrades for the tank for you. So we're going to go to modifications. Now, default ammunition can't be changed. The engine is the, uh, to them it's an upgraded engine, but it's actually the stock engine that you'd actually come across. The Shot Mark 9, um, believe it or not, m most six pounder guns only initially used the Shot Mark 5 until they came across things like Panthers and Tigers. In which case, uh, uh, after realizing that the Shot Mark 5 just could not penetrate a Tiger at, at effective ranges of a thousand meters plus, 
they designed the shot mark 9 um and of course the shot mark 9 can easily uh, penetrate it all damn day the shot mark 8 which is its default ammo isn't bad it does have a, a really large fragmentation effect so the, it's a good ammo to have as a backup if you're coming across really light armor or the side armor of tanks for example t-34s uh panzer 3s shermans as well uh don't react well to the shot mark 8 um more more frontally thick armored tanks like the panther like the tiger like the is1 or the kv-85 you're going to need the shot mark 5 you're going to need the shot mark 10. so uh my comparable ammunition loadout will probably be a lot of shot mark 8 and a few shot mark 9s okay guys and we are back after a lengthy wait in the queue time we are here on a conquest map here on poland and so we're going to take the churchill out and uh, we're going to see what sort of mischief we can cause now granted this is arcade uh this is to get a a rough idea of what you can expect to see from the tank now as i said we're not going to take any of the high velocity uh, uh, uh stuff we are probably only going to take no he We're only going to take a few. We're going to even it down to 40 rounds of both. Uh, 20 rounds of both. Now, the reason why is if we come across something with a little bit of heavier armor, we can actually deal with it. Badass freaking World War II pirate. Arr, that goes hard. Now, you may notice I've added a German infantry cross to the top of the turret. This is for realistic mode. This is to let my friendlies know that uh, I'm actually a friendly, not an enemy. Because most guys could just go on the silhouettes of the tank. Um, and, you know, some pilots, they will do a flyover and, and make sure that, you know, the tank that they're looking at is actually a friendly or an enemy. In real life, that's exactly what the German army actually did, um, was add the uh, markers to the vehicle so that uh, Stukas didn't uh, accidentally dive bomb or strafe their own tanks, especially if they captured ones like this Churchill, uh, like the captured Shermans and uh, captured T-34s. Capture KB twos, capture KB ones. Uh, I still would like to see a capture KB one and a capture KB two for the German army. I, I really would. Okay, so they've got thumb rolls. We can easily pen those. Got stock ammo. There's a sabbat, so I've got stuck in my head, so I think I just say that one way. Now it's stuck in your heads, guys. <laughs> You're welcome. So, as you can see, the tank is keeping up to its legendary, you know, 15 miles per hour. Dear Lord. Again, the the higher your, your driver's level is, the better off you're going to be. We've got some enemy tank. We, we apparently do now have enemy tanks in our forward operational area. So, we've got to be careful for cross crosswind shots and ambushes. Sounds like an SPAA. Could be... Yeah, it does sound like an SPAA, but it's none of ours there. We've got two pads of three and... Uh, two pads of threes and one T-34, so we know it's not ours. So we know it is an enemy SPAA. Again, it always helps the... Learn the, the oh, 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 enemy T-34. Gotta be careful. And we don't want to expose our sides. That fire rate, yeah, it tells me it's a pretty, really badass. Oh, he's hit. Is 
down to that shot. Critical hit, he's on fire. Got him. So I took a couple of shots, but you know, it's a quick firing six pounder gun. We did disable him. Now we could try and flank right here. According to the AO, we've got uh, enemy tanks actually closer than we even like to want to think. Right, that's a purple win. Now him in his gas tank. And he's gone. M10 motor carriage. Bounce another shot. Load some armor piercing now. And it's right to get his drive wheel. He's now my my gunner, so. Right, there's gunman left. Like a boss. Oh, three inch finally took us out. But as you can see, guys. The tank can actually take a wallop or two. I've really got to get me some, uh, some, uh, uh, respawn tokens for it. So, uh, I'll see you after this battle, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Got vehicles, guys. And so we're going to go to another battle. Ooh, Dominion and Carp uh, Domination on Carpathians immediately. Nice, nice. It's an event too. Ooh. So just like before, I'm actually going to go to Charlotte. Again, most people assume that the Churchill Mark III isn't going to make a good uh, uh, sniping slash assault vehicle. Bear in mind, guys, I still haven't uh, added points yet to my uh, crew. Those guys walk out the field first. Because if there's any tank destroyers up there, then we'll pop on them first. Again, remember the sur survivability onion, guys. Remember, you don't want to get spotted. You don't want to get seen. You don't want to get shot at. You don't want to take damage. Yes, this is arcade, but it still doesn't mean that you can't use terrain for cover, among other things. As you can see. If I know Okay, captured Alpha. There's an enemy T-34. They have an M18 now again. So we are fighting the Americans. That's fine. Looks like they've taken the water. Okay, so we're 
that we're pushing them out of Charlie. Don't stop me like that. Again, when you're in a Churchill, ironically, a lot of people don't think that a Churchill can bounce shots. They can, as you saw in the last replay, uh, the last uh, match. I was actually bouncing a fair few shots. Get the surprise shots, and that's the, that, that was the stock ammo. That was just the grape shot ammo that you saw just started wrecking and procking fires like crazy. It, it, it does its job very, very well. It really does. And what can I, honestly, what can I really say about the, uh, um, about the tank? For a battle rating of 3.7, it does struggle a little bit. But you know what? It's one of those sort of tanks that you're going to love to hate. I can just see it. I know, I mean, I'm British, of course. And I, the fact that we've finally got British tanks in the game now means it, it's opened up a whole world of personal and private custom games. Uh, the whole Axis ally thing where you can have, uh, um, you know, American and, and British forces, you know, taking on German forces and things like that and a whole bunch of 
personal campaign missions and whatnot you can design and build now with the new uh, SDK software that's coming out. Uh, I, I am pretty sure I'm going to be doing my own personal campaigns and whatnot. And uh, probably doing some YouTube videos on them, guys. But anyway, um, do I do I think the tanks are by? Absolutely. Uh, I believe it was. I think it was only. I think it was only like fifteen hundred gold. It was, I know it was cheaper than the K, than the KV one B. And the KV one B is about rank five point three. This one is about rank three point seven. So what are you going to see? You're going to see Panzer F twos. You're going to see Panzer Ls. You're going to see. Um, uh, 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 pack 40s, you're going to see Panzer 3Ms, you're not going to see Tigers, you're not going to see Hetzers, um, you're going to see uh, Panzer Gs, uh, you probably might see the odd Panzer H, you're not going to see any Tigers, uh, you're going to see Verbowins as you saw, you're not going to see any Oswins, you know, so you're looking at about rank, rank, you know, Mid to high rank twos, maybe low rank threes, at a pinch, um, from the uh, German side. From the American side, you're probably go definitely going to see 105 Shermans. You're definitely going to see gun motor carriages. You're not going to see Hellcats. You're not going to see M6s. You're not going to see uh, A2 Shermans. You're going to see Chaffees. You're going to see regular M4 Shermans. You're going to see uh, A1 Shermans. Um, so, you know, expect to see them. You're not going to see the Cobra King. You're not going to see the, the Black Cat. And you're not going to see the Calliope. So don't worry about those. Uh, what are you going to see from the USSR? You're going to see a whole metric arse ton of T-34s from 1940, 1941 to 1942. Um, you're not going to see the S uh, STZ. You're going to see KV-1s. You're going to see uh, T-28Es. You're probably going to see T90s. You're definitely going to see just the E's and SU7, uh, SU's all the way up to the 122s. Easy. Uh, Soviet premiums you're going to see. Probably the T3. Um, probably the, the BM8. Um, T16. Uh, T34E as you saw. Um, T34 1941 first. Uh, 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 you know. KV-1E you're not going to see, uh, the Zuat 37 you're going to see, you're not going to see the, the Landley Sherman, um, are you going to see, you're going to see the SMK guys, so you know, just a little heads up there, and of course, what are you going to see from the British, you're going to see other Churchill Mark 3s, you're going to probably see the Archer, the Achilles, uh, the Cromwells, um, you may even see a Matilda or two, uh, not, I really don't think you're going to see many Valentines, but you might. Uh, you're going to see the AC Mark II, IIs. You're going to see the Crusader AAAs. Uh, I'll be doing a video here soon on the Crusader AAA, which is actually going to be pretty goddamn fun from what I've uh, playtested. So, uh, are you going to see premiums? You might see the premium 17-pounder uh, uh, tank destroyer. You're not going to see the Sherman Firefly, and you're not going to see the Black Prince. Uh, you're not going to see the Comet or the Avenger. So it's going to stop at the Churchill Mark III heavy tanks wise. So you're not going to see any forms of Sherman Firefly. So you're not, the only 17 pounder gun you're going to have firing at you that's going to be any contention towards your armor is going to be from the premium uh, 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 Achilles. So, you know, the Achilles and maybe the premium Achilles. Yeah, they're, they're, they're the only ones you're going to see 17 pounders from. Um, maybe the Valentine, but again, the Valentine has to turn around and not move in order to shoot. So if you're the one who's stupid enough to uh, walk into a trap knowing that there's a valentine there, basically you deserve to die. So, long story short, or a short story long, either way, frankly, get the captured Churchill if you are a German tanker. You're going to love it. It's going to give you a break point entry into how the British tanks work, play, fight, etc. Et so it's, it's a, a way of getting into the British tanker's mind without going down the British tank line if you don't want to. Um, of course, you know, you guys know I'm a huge German tanker. As you can see from my German tech tree, I'm a huge German tanker. Uh, every tank you see here, I have earned the hard way. You know, I've literally ground my happy little hippie ass. I'm currently working on getting the Jagdpanzer, uh, Jagdtiger tank destroyer. 
once I've gotten that, I'll be working on the Panther 2. And then, of course, uh, I'll be planning on getting the Leopard 1 and the Jagd Panzer 45. Uh, 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 Konung Mag Hedgehog's Jagd Panzer 45. So, again, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I greatly appreciate it. Please leave a comment. Give it a rate. Give it a, if you're new around here, hit the subscribe button. I greatly appreciate it. If you want to know any more, I'll put some links to some resources and some materials in the video description so you can see, for, you know, you can read at your leisure. If reading is not necessarily your thing, head over to audible.com. There's plenty of audiobooks on tank construction, tank design, tank battles. Uh, I believe currently right now they are in the middle of turning Patton's autobiography into an audiobook. I know they've done the same for uh, Johann Schmidt. I know they've done the same for Michael Whitman. I know they've done the same for a whole bunch of tank commanders, Patton, uh, Mon Phil Marshall Montgomery, uh, Churchill himself, um, uh, I believe they've even done an audio diary of Hitler's, uh, uh, an audio book of Hitler's diary. So, uh, again, guys, head over to audible.com. I am not affiliated with audible.com. I do not have an affiliate link or anything else. But I'm just saying, if reading is not your thing and you just rather to listen while you're on the way, on your way to work or to school or whatnot, or on your way home, you know, go ahead. Just go get, get yourself an audible, a script, a script, a, an audible subscription. And again, guys, thanks for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up. I greatly appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that share button. Share it with your friends on social media. You can always find me if you see in the bottom corner. You can find me on Twitter. It's uh, twitter.com slash deceptive gropers. Facebook. It's facebook.com deceptive gaming group. Uh, Twitch. Twitch.com slash deceptive cobras. And of course, YouTube here. YouTube.com slash deceptive cobras. Until then, guys, my name's Danny, deceptive cobras Monahan. You're, you're beautiful. You're lovely. You're sexy. Welcome to the Cobra Nation. And I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, I'll catch you later, and I'll see you in the next one, my friends. Cornering around. Of course, biggest weakness is the upper ma uh, uh, the upper uh, uh, chassis, with it only being 16mm. So you've got to be careful of artillery, even light artillery will will wreck you. You have to be careful of HE as well, because HE will wreck you. Um, this isn't spaced armor, unfortunately, so don't give your opponents your sides if you, if you can't, you know, if you can't help it. Same as the tart. Tart's not really that strong, but it does have some sort of angling to it, 25 degree angling. So, you know, unless you're going down the hill with, you know,